Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar and the last of the webinar series. This part is about manage your e-bomb to spare part process. My name is Carolina Haig, and I will be your technical host for today's event. And presenting today will be Martin Toreskog. Toreskog. Thank you, Carolina. Uh, I will share my screen. So let me know when you can see it. We can see it. Good. Uh, so welcome, everyone. Uh, and as Carolina said, this is the third uh, session out of uh, the three that we've done. We did e to or CAD to E-BOM. We did uh, E-BOM to M-BOM. And now it's e to spare parts. Um, so uh, I've been working here for uh, approximately 18 years, working with Windchill and uh, Creo and most of our, our product suites. Um, and the agenda for today, I will, as I've done before, start with an introduction to the process, and then I will go into to windshield and uh, demonstrate, and then we will end with some questions. Uh, I heard a beep, um, uh, Carolina. Can you just verify that uh, everything works still? Everything works still. Good. So uh, starting with some definitions, if you've been in the previous sessions, uh, this shouldn't be too, uh, too new to you. Uh, we have the part or the item, uh, which represents the, the part number basically, that acts as a placeholder for all documentation that describes the parts uh, and also creates the, the bill of material. And on the left-hand side here uh, is the engineering bill of material. So the tool that we're using to create the service bill of material, which is the SBOM, is the same tool as I demonstrated uh, last time when I did the EBOM to MBOM session. But now we will create a service bill of material instead of a manufacturing bill of material. So the service bill of material is here on the right hand side. And what we do there is uh, define the, first of all, the navigation structure. So if you consider, if you would consider a, a traditional spare part manual, you would have chapters in, in that and pages with illustrations and, and parts lists and, and so on. But we can also then define the, the um, sort of navigation structure that this uh, catalog contains spare parts, it contains um, wear parts, uh, accessories, documentation, and, and so on. And we also define what to uh, to sell as a spare part should this part be be sellable or should it be included in a kit for instance or should it be uh, not sellable at all so we define that in the in the service bill of material the process uh, overview is a three step process where we start with the engineering bill of material we define the service bill of material in windshield we define the, the attributes. Uh, typically, you would have um, remarks in your spare part lists, and you potentially can define uh, serial numbers when a part is valid and, uh, and so on. And then, of course, I will demonstrate this. The second step is to leverage the service bill of material and define the, uh, the illustrations where you add callouts and um, notes and, uh, and so on. Then what we do is that we publish the service bill of material to a web-based aftermarket uh, portal called Significant, where you can browse, search, and buy spare parts and um, access documentation and, uh, and so on. So that's the sort of overview. The first step here is then to uh, define the, the service bill of material. So you open the engineering bill of material in in bomb transformer you define the part list so these little icons here are representing the the different part lists so if we compare the e-bomb to m-bomb with e-bomb to s-bomb typically there's much more restructuring going on on the s-bomb side because here we define the the uh, yeah we basically define the part lists and as you can see here the the structure in the e-bomb is fairly flat but perhaps I want one, one section or one illustration that defines the engine, 
one that defines the chassis, one that defines the steering, the wheels, the seat, and bumpers, and uh, and so on. So I basically create those, and then I drag and drop the parts into each part list. Um, and in the same way as for, for M-bombs, uh, Windshield uh, keeps track of the traceability. So in this case, I've taken the gear wheel uh, and dragged that into the engine um, part list here. And even if they have different parents, as you can see, Windshield keeps track of that and grays out or makes the parts phantom that are uh, consumed. And the parts that are not consumed are, are in shaded mode like this. And then we add the, the metadata to the SBOM um, if a part should be visible in the part list or not. So uh, typically we consume all the parts in the SBOM, even if they're not spare parts. And then we define using attributes that in this engine here, it's that part, that part, that part, and those two parts that should be um, displayed in the, in the part list and basically purchasable or sellable. When there's changes going on on the EBOM side, it could be the case that for, for manufacturing, of course, we would uh, have it sort of one-to-one. -one. So if a part is replaced, we would typically remove that from the, the MBOM. But on the SBOM side, it could be the case that that product has already been delivered. So there are products containing the old parts and uh, we could then include both the old parts and the new parts in the SBOM and define uh, serial number ranges and, and so on, which parts should be valid for each, um, each delivered product. And then, of course, you identify the changes as, uh, as we can see that, that the parts are um, visible if they're not consumed on the, on the SBOM side. The second step is defining the uh, the illustrations. So then we um, use the the SBOM, the part lists uh, that we've created, and create illustrations in in Creo Illustrate. But we also leverage the information that we have defined in the SBOM, which of these parts should be be sellable and so on. And so these parts here are the parts that I've defined as as sellable in in the SBOM. And then I create the, the illustrations. I, uh, um, it's possible to have multiple illustrations in, in one Creo Illustrate file. So in this case, if I go back to the previous slide here, I have the chassis, the engine, the bumpers, the steering, the seat, the wheels, and so on. I could decide to create a, an illustration on each of these part lists, or I can create it on this level here, and then Creo Illustrate will understand that each of these part lists should be its own figure in, um, in Creo Illustrate. So here I have the, the different figures. If I double click them, I can then work on that. And the part list for each figure will then update. So all the parts in the, um, uh, in the, uh, the part list will be included, but only the um, uh, only the parts that I have defined as, as sellable should be included in the uh, in the in the item list here. I add callouts and Creo Illustrate automatically hotspots the um, uh, the callout, so it's possible to to click it in in the web and then potentially buy that part. The illustration is associative to the SBOM, so when you update the SBOM, you basically open the illustration and then everything that you've done will be uh, will be intact and then you can explode the new parts and uh, and so on then we publish the sbom to significant here's a screenshot of that so here we have the navigation structure of the go kart uh, product so we have spare parts wear parts accessories documentation and uh, and so on and now I clicked spare part here. So then I see the different part lists with a preview of the illustration. If I click um, one of the, the part list, I will then navigate into that and display the, um, uh, the content, the illustration and the part list. Everything is searchable, of course, and any attributes on the parts, on the part list, on the documents, uh, illustrations and so on can be 
can be searchable and filtered. So it's uh, quite a powerful search engine. If I click one of the, the uh, part list here, I will then display the, um, the illustration. If I click the hotspots, I will expand the row and then I can um, buy, that, uh, buy that part. So everything here is, um, is published from, from Windchill. With that said, I will move into the demo part of the session. And if you've been in the previous sessions, we have been working on the, uh, the Lego car. So I will simply open this in, um, in Bomb Transformer. So I click the Actions menu and then open in Bomb Transformer, which opens up the, uh, the window displaying the um, the engineering bill of material on the left hand side here. And currently I don't have a, a service bill of material, uh, but I will shortly create one. So we can see the, um, the uh, visualization. If I click a part, then of course that will be highlighted in the, in the bomb and vice versa. If I click a part here, it will be highlighted here. Uh, but if you've been in the previous sessions, that shouldn't be new to you. So what I want to do is create an S-bomb based on this. So I will right click this and say new downstream part. And here I have the option to define different types of parts. And in this case, it will be a part catalog because that's the, the top level, so to speak. Module or a part list uh, is the um, yeah the representation of the the illustration and the, the list of parts. So in this case, I will create a part catalog node. In this configuration of Windchill, I have decided to automatically generate the the number for that. The name, of course, is inherited from from the the e bomb. And when I did the m bomb in the previous session, I decided to duplicate the structure. But in this case, the structure on the first level below my, my Lego car or go-kart is completely different. So I will start from scratch, basically. And then I will click OK. I will then get a part catalog node. So as you can see, this is a completely different object than, than this. And we use that information when we publish uh, the S-bomb to significant. So. Uh, significant understands that this type of part will become a, um, a, a catalog. So the layout on, on the web page is, is basically defined on, based on that. On the first level here, I want to define the different categories of the, the, the Lego car. So I will insert some new parts. I will select part catalog node. And then I will call them chassis, engine, steering, seat. Let's call it. Uh, no, sorry. I this is the uh, the next level. I would actually call it spare parts. Sorry about that. Spare parts, wear part, uh, accessories, perhaps accessories. Uh, documentation and the kits. Call it that. And then those parts are then added to my um, my my go kart. What I can do now is define the the order in which these should be appear. So I have a position attribute that I can define. Now it's only sorted on, on the number, but if I want to have kits after wear parts, for instance, I can then say three there and then perhaps accessories and then documentation there. And then sorting on, on the positioning attribute will then display that in, in that particular order. Now, if uh, I want some, some part lists here below the spare part section, I will insert some more, insert multiple new, but now I will select module. 
of course, the display name of this could be part list if, if, um, if you prefer. In this case, the numbering of the, the module object is not, um, uh, does not have auto generated number. So I will simply just call this, I will grab the number of the parent and then I will add 0, 1, 0, 2, and so on. So I will just add these here. Maybe I want a different row. Let's call it six, five, four, three, two. So now I want the chassis. I want the engine. I want the steering. The seat, the wheels, and uh, let's see, bumpers. And as you can see, those are added here. So if you would think of this as a PDF uh, of a spare part manual, these would be the different chapters. And then below the spare parts, you would then have the different sub chapters here. And of course, I can add additional uh, levels in the other sections, but for the sake of the demo and time, I will we'll skip that. So what I will do now is restructure my bomb. So I will grab parts from, from the e-bomb. So that part, that part, that part. Uh, let's grab that one, that one. And uh, let's see if we have that one. So I will simply drag and drop these on top of the chassis part, chassis, chassis module. And if I turn on the occurrence status here, I will then see that these parts have been consumed and then they show up on, on this side here. So these are the parts um, to start with that I want to use in my my spare part catalog. Let's say I select that part. You can see that the content or the quantity of those are two. So if I would drag and drop that, I would actually get that part and that part. But that part should be included in the bumpers uh, um, module instead. So what I wanna do is simply copy that part and potentially that part. So instead of copying it or dragging and dropping it here, I can copy from, from this side. Then I'm only copying that particular occurrence of that part. So if you have, let's say 10 bolts and five of them should go into one and five of them should go into a different um, module, then you can simply copy from the, the, uh, uh, the visualization. And then we can see that that, is, is gone and it should appear here on on um, on the S bomb side. So those parts there. Let's grab the seat and I will grab the entire seat here. I will put that into the seat module. But I also want that part that should be included in the seat as well. And as you can see. The quantity is two, then I will copy it from here. So I don't get all of them, paste. And then I will, I will not do the complete car here, but let's grab some of these, um, uh, the exhaust assembly, the engine block, that one, that one, the gear wheels, that one and let's uh, take the crank let's see if we have everything that we want or oh i forgot to hold control when i select it now so i need to do it do it again here let's uh, yeah let's start with those so i will move that into the engine And then I will grab some more parts, that one and that one, and the exhaust assembly. So
So if we click this, we can then see that the visualization starts to uh, appear here. And then what I've done here, if I deselect everything now, if I select the chassis only, those are the parts that should be included in that part list. If I select the engine, let's deselect that one. If I select the engine, then I have all the engine parts and then I have the, the seat part here. So what I've done now is, is create the foundation for my, my illustration. And what I can do now is define which of these parts within the engine, let's say I deselect that and then I only select the engine, which of these parts are actually uh, sellable. In this configuration of Winchell, we have defined that attribute on the usage link, which means that this bracket, for instance, could be a spare part in this uh, part list, but it could be uh, it could not be a spare part in, in a different part list. So that flexibility is possible here. So then the name of this I've called hidden slash visible. So let's say I want the part to be visible in, in the list. It should be included in the list, but um, the number should be hidden. Then I can sele select um, uh, yes or no. So yes would mean that the, the number is displayed and no would uh, mean that the part is included, but I hide the number. So let's say that some of these parts are spare parts and you can see that they appear here on the um, the engine block perhaps shouldn't be a spare part, the exhaust assembly and so on. So they start to appear here. So the illustration will ba be based on the entire engine, but it's only that part, that part, that part, and that part, which are spare parts. If I only included the spare parts in the SBOM, that would mean that the illustration would only contain that part, that part, let's see, that part, that part, uh, if I select them correctly, those parts. And of course, when you illustrate something, you would want the sort of surrounding geometry to, to make it uh, clear. What I also wouldn't get is the compare functionality. So when I've consumed all the parts, then I can see which parts have not yet been consumed. If I would only include the, the spare parts, of course, there will be parts missing, which would make compare, comparing the bombs uh, a lot more, more difficult. So those are the two, two reasons. So I'm going to check in these guys here, select them, and then check in. And perhaps you noticed in the usage uh, tab here, we have some more attributes like remark and, uh, and, and so on. So if I want to make a, a note on a specific part, then it's possible to do it here. So this is the, if we go back here to the PowerPoint, what we've done now is this step here, restructuring the EBOM into an SBOM. I could now publish that to the web, but the next step will then be to, to uh, create the, the illustrations of the, the different part list. And for the sake of time, I have already opened that in, um, uh, in Creo Illustrate. So as you can see here, if I display all the, uh, the entire bomb here, we can see that we have the Lego car, we have the different chassis, seat, steering, and so on. And for each of the part lists that we have in the bomb, Cree Illustrate has created one figure for each of them. So in this first one, dash one, what I want to do is display only the chassis. And you can see that the item list here displays the parts that I have selected as as spare parts. So what I want to do is select these parts and 
to make the illustration as clear as possible, I want to make all the other parts phantom. So I'm going to invert my selection to select the other parts. And then I'm going to create or make them phantom like this. So it's clear which of these parts are actual spare parts. Um, I will just select. Um, and my task as an illustrator would then, of course, be to explode these uh, assemblies. So I will drag them out like this, maybe add some explode lines, perhaps move this part a little bit to the side. Uh, let's see, like that. Explode these guys. And then that part. And then add some call, uh, some explode lines and then I will just select the parts and then add callouts to this. And of course, I can make this. Let's move these around a little bit. So if I click one of these callouts here, you can see that it selects the part in the in the item list and vice versa, which means that this uh, sort of area here is what we call hot spotted, which allows us to, to basically do stuff with it on, on the web. Uh, for instance, expand a, a row in the in the list of parts and add a add to order button. So this is my first illustration, and then I move on to the next one, which would be the um, the seat in this case, and then I would do similar things here. So I would uh, maybe select a predefined orientation and then start to explode the, um, uh, the assembly in the way that, uh, that I want. And then as you can see, the, the um, item list here is then also based on, on the SBOM. And then I would go to the next one and next one and next one. So if we now go back to this, this was the second step. The third step here is a completely automated step where we take the SBOM and publish that into significant. And just to show you, if I go to an existing, um, part here. Let's see if I have that in my recent, uh, I think it should be this one. So this I have done in, uh, uh, I've done before, but it's sort of the similar uh, structure. We have spare parts, we have chassis engine. In this case, I've actually added the bumpers and I added sub modules here. So front bumper, side bumper, rear bumper. Um, and if we would go to significant now, or actually I want to show you where this part is used. So I go to the where used tab, and then we can see that the go-kart is included in a Lego Technics part catalog. And the Lego Technics is included in the Lego so if I visit the Lego structure now, we can see that Lego contains Lego City, Lego Movie, Lego Ninjago, and here we have Lego Technics. And below that, I have added the go-kart that contains my SBOM, but it also contains some Porsche, Chevrolet, Bugatti, and, and so on. So I'm also building the navigation structure for the complete aftermarket um, portal. And that's what we're gonna look at now. So this is uh, significant, um, which is an, an aftermarket platform for uh, searching and, and browsing uh, spare parts, documentation, software, and, uh, and so on. And we have the different nodes here, which you saw in in Windchill, these first levels here. If I go to Lego Technics now, perhaps I need to 
Um, I didn't lose my internet connection again, Karina, uh, uh, right? No, it's no? working. Good. <laughs> uh, let's see. I think I was uh, I was logged in before, but uh, if I waited too long, it will log me out. So now I'm in the the Lego Technics, and then we see the the different catalogs here, and we will go into go kart, and these are the the sort of categories of this product, and we have spare parts, wear parts, accessories, documentation, and and so on. Here we actually have some assembly instructions as well. So if you uh, joined the e-bomb to m-bomb process that would be process plans that would be included there but let's focus on the spare parts here we can see the the preview of the illustrations and the the different modules or part lists here if i go into the uh, the chassis for instance and here we can see the the illustration that i've done if I click a part, it will be highlighted in the in the uh, in the bomb, and also uh, add the possibility of, of actually adding this to my my shopping list or order cart. Um, also, if I click a part here, it will be zoomed in and and highlighted here. So this is the hotspot information that I talk about in in Creo Illustrate. If we take a look at the bumpers here, that um that we saw that in windchill i had added sub modules to that so these guys here uh, are divided into um front bumper side bumper and and rear bumper so if i scroll down here i can actually see the the lower level part lists here or i can click the the structure here as well um and then the same way it it zooms in and and then I can add that part to my my uh, my shopping list. Here is one example where I have decided to include this pin part in uh, in my my part list, but it's not possible to buy that particular part separately. Uh, or it could be uh, possible, but but I've also added that part to a kit. And that means that I will get the kit number here instead. So I'm I'm hiding the number of the, the actual part, but I reference the kit. And then I can add the kit to, to, um, uh, to that. And I can also visit the kit. Uh, if I go here, I can take a look at what that, uh, that kit is looked like. So I've included all of these parts in, in that kit. Um, so searching in Insignificant, you can search for uh, either name of parts. If you have the number, of course, you can search on that. You can perform searches in your order cart. So the same search works here. So I can add parts directly here. Uh, I can also search for any attributes on the parts, on the documents, and so on. So I think I have RDA. I've added a, um, a description to, to some of the, um, uh, the objects here. I can use that as a search criteria. So basically, any information that you want to be searchable. And if you have it in Windchill or if you have it in your ERP system, everything can be collected and um, and made available here in in significant so i think uh, with that said i will uh, leave it for for questions if we have any carolina yes we do we have a couple of ones but i have to say it's always nice to know that you can always get an extra front bumper to your lego go kart it's always nice yes mm -hmm. absolutely Accidents happen even with Lego. Yep. Um, the first question we have here is how much of this functionality is included in windshield as standard? Are there any other modules required? Uh, yes, you need um, uh, you need the license for uh, for bomb transformer. 
uh, that's that's what you need for to be able to create the uh, uh, the S bomb. Uh, and of course, significant is a separate application. So if you want to to publish this to significant, that's uh, an application on its own. But uh, just to um, uh, be clear about this. Uh, these, this is the sort of over, overview process. It could be a different system here. So significant is not mandatory in order to create S-bombs. We have customers that, that use Windshield to create S-bombs, but has, they have a different aftermarket or e-commerce uh, system. We also have customers that are using Windshield to create um, S-bombs, but have a different illustration tool. We have customers that only have significant and don't have windshield. And so all of these combinations are possible. Um, but in windshield, you need, um, uh, you need a bomb transformer license in order to, to create them. And we go to the next question. Is it possible to have different types of classifications for parts that is marked as spare parts, like local store or central store? Yes. Uh, absolutely. Uh, what we could do as well, um, so uh, classification in, in Windshield, of course, is, is um, uh, possible to use in, in this process as well. Uh, but um, where the part is um, uh, sort of sent from could be, uh, it's not mandatory to manage that in, in Windshield. Typically, uh, the storage locations and so on are managed in, in the ERP system. Uh, so if we go to Vedesta here, for instance, and browse some, some parts, here we can see that here we fetch the, um, uh, the storage location or the warehouse from, from ERP. We can display the, um, uh, the stock level as well, if it's available or, or not. Um, so, um, but yes, classification can be, be used, is the short answer. Great. And the next question is, uh, how do you handle an existing spare? If a new product uses an existing part that is already used as a spare, is it highlighted so you do not create a duplicate spare? Uh, let's see. Perhaps I would need some clarification on, on that. Uh, but uh, what I didn't show here um, which uh, could be the case for, for some of the, the audience here, is that I created these completely separate from, from the engineering bill of material, because this is a fairly flat structure like this. But many companies, as Vedersta, for instance, they have sort of a modular uh, e-bomb. So if we go here to, to Vedersta and search for Ferrox, uh, let's see that one. Um, they actually create their engineering bill of material on, on this level. So they have a drawbar, they have frames and so on. So their S-bombs is based on, on these sort of modular levels. And if they have created the S-bomb based on the, on the frame here, for instance, and reuse that in another product, of course, then you've done all the work. So when moving parts from the E-bomb into the S-bomb, Winchy will recognize that this part actually has an S-bomb already and reuse that so you don't have to do that again. So it will basically identify that. And the, the reason why it does it is that when I create the, the downstream part, as I did this uh, here, Winchy creates a link between the, the E-bomb and the M-bomb. So if you have a frame, for instance, and you've created a, a, a module based on that. When you copy that from, from E-bomb to, to S-bomb, Windshield will then identify that. Don't you want to use the, um, uh, the S-bomb instead? Hopefully that answers the, the question, but uh, otherwise I think you will provide my email address and, uh, and so on, Carolina, for yes, follow-up questions. And then we have a question here. How are you defining kits? Kits are defined as um, uh, these guys as well. Uh, it's just an attribute that, uh, let's see if we go here. I think I have that edit part. 
on a module, we have an attribute called kit. And of course, I don't have this <laughs> in, in this uh, environment, but it's, it's an attribute that we set to yes. And if we do that, if we take a look here in, uh, when I visited the, um, uh, this one here, and significant will calculate and find this part if that part is included in a module with a kit attribute set to yes, it will automatically add the drop down list here, allowing me to, to add that kit to my, my cart. So, yeah, you, you create a, a module, set it as a kit, and then you add the parts you want to, to have in, in that kit. It could be uh, included in the, in the EBOM, but you can add separate parts. So I can insert existing parts that may not be in this particular SBOM. But uh, yeah, so you can either drag and drop them or search for them and add them. Yep. Good. And then we have one more question. Can we set up the system to inherit WT part number from engineering part slash boom to service part slash boom? Yes. Uh, so, um... If I would, uh, let's see, if I would copy that and paste that into, yeah, this one, for instance, I can actually paste it as a new part. And uh, let's see, yes. If we go here, let's see. Here you can see that it inherits the number of that particular part. So if if the auto numbering is not defined, it will actually inherit the number automatically. So yes. And any attributes on the parts, let's say you have uh, weight and specification and uh, whatever on, on the parts, that can be inherited to the, the SBOM as well. So you basically define which of the part part attributes should be inherited from EBOM to SBOM. That's a configuration in, in Winchell. Yep. Good. And we have time for one final question. Yep. Uh, how is the SBOM published to the web? Yeah, I, uh, I didn't show that now, but um, what we do is we schedule an export uh, in Windshield. So we base that on the modify stamp. So when was this last modified? And we do this for all the different objects. So part catalog nodes, modules, parts, documents, illustrations, and so on. And then every night we schedule that, that, uh, that export and it's an incremental export. So if I publish the entire database today, and then tomorrow I have modified one single part, then we only export that. And then uh, the import to, to significant is also uh, automated. So um, if, I, um, if I modify a part today, it will be uh, available in, in significant uh, the next day. And of course we base this on state as well. So typically we don't want anything that's not released perhaps on the, on the web. So when we do the incremental publishing, we will exclude parts and yeah, all the different objects based on the, the state of the, the objects. Okay, great. Well, this was it. So Thank you everybody for participating in this webinar series. It's been fantastic to have you all participate. Thank you, Martin, for a huge contribution and a fantastic presentation as usual. Thank you and feel free to, to contact me and uh, or Carolina if you have more questions. Yes. So once again, thank you and have a really nice day now. Bye. Bye-bye.